Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I have another piercing related video for you guys and that is going to be a signs of a healing Monroe piercing. However, before you go, this is not just for Monroe piercings. This is for any lip piercing because a Monroe piercing is a lip piercing. So if you're someone out there who recently just got their lip pierced, whether it be here, 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 wherever on your lip, then you can go ahead and stay tuned for this video. First things first, I always say this and I'm going to say it again and every video that I do. I am not a professional piercer. Always seek the professional advice of your piercer or of a piercer in general. I am not a professional. I always try to make that very clear when I make these sort of videos. Um, I'm just going off of experience and just knowledge that I know, um, but I am in no way a licensed professional piercer. Okay, so like I said, a Monroe piercing or whatever type of lip piercing you may have, typically Monroe slash lip piercings, um, they take about four to eight weeks to heal depending on your lip and how you take care of it and the jewelry and all that stuff. So about four to eight weeks is when a lip piercing is usually healed. Um, when you do get the piercing, it is very normal to feel pain afterwards. You will have a very long bar in the actual piercing and that is very normal. The bar should be longer during healing because it accommodates for the swelling that is going to happen because when you're sticking a needle through your lip, you are bound to swell a little bit. Totally normal, that's why they do give you a longer bar. So after you get it pierced, it'll be very normal to see some redness, feel some pain, it'll be really tender for a while. Um, depending on where your lip piercing is placed, it may be hard to eat for a while. I know when I got this pierced, I kind of had to eat a little bit slower because of the plate on the inside of my lip. Um, I had to keep it from catching on my teeth, so just be aware that you know you kind of have to um, be a little more careful when you eat as well. Lip piercings are also considered oral piercings because you do have the outside but the lip piercing also goes inside your lip so it is considered a oral piercing. Another thing that is very common and that is very normal to see is lymph, some white pus uh, that is very common. It'll either be clear, white, or a little bit off-white. If it's a deep green or a deep yellow color and it has an odor to it, it may be infected so be sure to go see your piercer if you are having any sort of issue um, with infection. A little bit of bleeding is normal as well. Um, redness on the inside of the lip piercing. When you talk or eat, it may be a little bit tender as well. Another thing that I see most common with people is scar tissue. Sometimes people will get a white ring either on the outside or the inside of their lip piercing. That is known as scar tissue. Again, very normal, it does happen. Sometimes it goes away, sometimes it doesn't. If you do have it, just keep an eye on it. Make sure it doesn't hurt or anything. And if you are worried about it, again, go see your piercer for advice. Some things to be aware of when you do get your lip piercing is it should always be done with a labrette stud or a Bray, however you like to pronounce it. Personally, I do not think hoops for lip piercings are, um, you know, very realistic because they do move quite a bit and that can really kind of slow down the healing process. And also when you have hoops and it starts moving, you're bringing bacteria into the piercing. So hoops are just not really what I recommend personally for lip piercings. Definitely get pierced with a stud, a flat back, a Labrae stud or anything like that. That's what you should be getting pierced with. Typically the gauge is between 14 to 16, sometimes 18, not very likely. Most of the time you will see 16 gauge for lip piercings, but again, that's totally different and that totally depends on your piercer and what he or she prefers to use. And another thing I wanted to really put out there in this video is when your piercing is healing and you start to notice really bad swelling to the point where your lip is starting to grow over the piercing, go see your piercer immediately. That is so important. Your skin should not be growing over the bar. Sometimes when they give you a um, labrette stud, they don't know how your body's going to react to the piercing. You may not swell at all or you may swell a little too much to the point where you may need a longer barbell. So if you are experiencing any sort of overgrowth either on the inside of the lip piercing or the outside, go see your piercer ASAP and have them switch it out for you. Don't ignore it. Um, if you can't get to a piercer right away, try to ice it as much as possible. Also, another thing is the piercing should not be changed before it is fully healed. I'm a huge advocate for that. You should always wait for your piercings to be 110% healed before you're changing out the jewelry. It's just very important, it's common sense. When you're changing out the jewelry before it's healed, you're interrupting the healing process and it's just gonna take even longer. Just leave the bar in that you were given until it's healed enough to change it. Mine, I left mine in for one month and then I was finally able to change it, but mine did take about four to six weeks to heal 
um, totally. And like I said earlier, a lip piercing is also considered an oral piercing, so not only should you be taking care of the outside, you should also be taking care of the inside of the piercing as well, which means mouthwash or sea salt rinse after you eat or drink anything that isn't water, um, or after you smoke, if you're a smoker, always make sure you do that because you want to keep the inside clean as well. And the mouthwash should be non-alcoholic, or if you have a mouthwash with alcohol in it, dilute it 50-50 with just some water and swish it around your mouth for about one minute and spit it out. That's all you have to do for the inside. Me, personally, when I had mine, I was kind of an overachiever when it came to cleaning. So basically, I would just flip my lip up and I would take a Q-tip with the sea salt solution and clean the inside. I'll go ahead and show you. So here's the inside of the plate. I would just clean around this part. But that's what the inside looks like. Sorry, I look freaking crazy like that. And the very obvious thing is the better oral health that you have, the better your piercing will heal. Again, that's just common sense. Brush your teeth. Just brush everywhere around your mouth, but again, be very careful, especially if it's still healing. It may be really tender. So just really um, take good care of your mouth, but be very careful as well since your piercing is healing. I already talked about gauge. Usually it's about 14 to 16 is what you will most commonly see with lip piercings. When I got mine done, it was done with a 16 gauge and the length was quite long. I cannot remember the exact length of mine but again every piercer is different so you really just kind of have to talk to and ask your own piercer as far as sizing bar sizing um, I already said that they give you a longer one for the beginning stages of healing um, very normal for swelling when it goes down you can change it to a much shorter bar if that is what you prefer that's personally what I like I like to have it super snug up to my lips so you can't see the bar poking out when I talk that's just what I prefer what I did for to get the perfect size as I went to my piercer and I asked him what a good size would be for that. What works for me may not work for you. Everyone has different lip sizes. Yours may be thicker, yours may be thinner, yours may be in between. So the best thing to do is when you're looking for the perfect size for your lip ring is go and ask your piercer and he'll be able to look at you and from experience he or she will be able to tell you what size will look good and what will be comfortable for you. Or if you don't want to do that you can just go ahead and experiment. Go online or go somewhere and buy a whole bunch of different sizes put them in and see which one you like the best and then just keep that size but you know sizing is something that's very very complicated and I get so many questions on it but I can't tell you because everyone's lip is different so just please keep that in mind as far as different types of jewelry there is externally threaded internally threaded uh, bioplast which is what I personally use and this, this is a push-in. I will put videos of my collection up here and how to change it if you're curious. But mine is a Bioplast push-in, so it's just a clear um, bar and it just has the jewel that pushes into my lip. That is what I personally use, that is what I like. Um, you may not like that. You may like to use, you know, internally threaded or externally. Totally fine, it's just whatever you prefer. Another thing I wanna talk about that I know I'm gonna get questions on and that I do get questions on quite a bit is Bioplast jewelry. Bioplast jewelry is a flexible kind of plastic material and um, it is most commonly used in lip piercings or you know tongue piercings because when you're wearing metal in your lips or you know your tongue or anything like that, uh, the wear and tear of the metal on your teeth can really kind of wear down the enamel on your teeth and it can also cause gum recession. Gum recession is something that, you know, when something is constantly rubbing up against your gums, your gums start to fade away. It can be very, very dangerous, which is why I personally like to use Bioplast. Bioplast is not as hard and it's not as harsh on your teeth and gums as metal is. So also keep that in mind as well if you are looking for something to wear in your lip piercings. I like Bioplast. However, you should not be wearing Bioplast or anything acrylic in the piercing until it is fully healed. Always make sure you keep the metal, whether it be surgical steel, titanium, gold, whatever, keep that in for the healing time and then after it's healed you can change it to whatever you want. Another question is where do you get your body jewelry from? I get it from all sorts of places. I go to Amazon, eBay, BlueBanana.com, um, and Body Candy. Those are my top four places I go and get body jewelry. A lot of people will disagree with me. A lot of really high-end shops will always tell you do not go online for body jewelry, but me personally, I have never had an issue. It's all about experience and personal preference.
you know, everyone's different. I have no issue buying my jewelry offline. Never had an issue. It's whatever you prefer. If you want to do it and give it a try, go ahead. If you did and didn't like it, then you don't have to. So it's up to you and totally what you want to do. And one more question that I most commonly get when it comes to piercings is, for example, hi, I got my lip pierced about two months ago and I'm ready to change it. When I went to change it, it really hurt. Why? Um, the thing that most commonly happens with that and the thing that I was really confused about when I first started getting into piercings was was again gauge and sizing. Um, every every piercing website, every you know different type of jewelry has a different gauge. Either it be 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, whatever. The best thing to do for that is when you go and get your lip pierced, ask your piercer what gauge your piercing is. So for, for example, mine, it was pierced with a 16 gauge. So when I knew it was time to change it, I knew to get a 16 gauge because it would fit perfectly. Sometimes if people are pierced with a 16 gauge, they don't know it and they go to change it to a 14 gauge and it really kind of hurts and there's a lot of pressure and stretching and they don't get that. That's why. You're trying to put a thicker gauge into a smaller gauged piercing. Do you know what I mean? Is that making sense? So just try to keep in mind what gauge you have and you know what you're going to be changing it to. Make sure it's either the same or smaller. If you want to go bigger and it does hurt, it does go away. Just kind of baby it for a couple days and you will be fine. But that is the reason why it kind of hurts that way. You know, and this, this goes for all piercings, like any type of body jewelry that you have. Either try to go with the same gauge or smaller. At least that's what I do. But again, totally up to you and what you prefer. Okay, everyone, so that is everything that I have for signs of a healing lip slash Monroe piercing. I really hope you guys found this helpful. If you have any questions for me whatsoever, I will be more than happy to answer them for you. You can either contact me through my social media, which is all down below, or you can leave a comment. Either way, I will try to get back to you as fast as I can. But until then, I will see you guys very soon in my next video. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe before you go. I love you guys. Bye!